Well, there are certainly a lot of editing styles you can apply to your images, but if you want to try editing with more dramatic colors in Photoshop, well, you, my friend, have come to the right place. Because in this video, I'll share a five-step process to turn any photo into a creative, colorful edit using some surprisingly simple tools. But fair warning, if you don't like colors or fun edits, you should probably click away now. For the rest of you, let's get started. Now our journey will begin here inside of Camera Raw, and since I opened a raw file directly into Photoshop, Camera Raw will open automatically. However, if you're trying to do this with a JPEG image, just go up to Filter and down to Camera Raw Filter from the main Photoshop workspace so you end up in the same area as me. Now before we do any color adjustments, you need to first do your exposure adjustments. I've already done that here on this raw image, but you can do all of these adjustments just within the lights panel here, make all of your highlight shadows and exposure adjustments until you have a balanced exposure that you're happy with. Once that is complete, we are ready for the first adjustment in the process, which has to do with color grading. Now in this particular image, we're gonna go and push it way towards the blue colors. So we're gonna add a rich blue and we're gonna change some of the yellows and the greens to favor more of a reddish color. The colors that you push towards will kind of depend on the colors that you already have available in your image, but since there is a lot of white and it's kind of stormy and things, that will make it easy to push this towards blue. That means inside of the color grading panel, I want to move all of these values over towards that blue color. So you can find a hue that works for your image, but I kind of like this darker blue. So I'm gonna move all of the three exposure values down towards that area. Now take a moment to play around with the hues and the intensities, but this looks okay enough for now. We can then add a little bit of contrast to this by using the sliders below the shadows, midtones, and highlights, and this will either lighten or darken that particular exposure range to add a little bit of extra contrast into the photo. So I've just lightened the highlights, darkened the shadows, and brightened the midtones. You can then play around with the blending to make those colors more or less intense, as well as the balance, which won't have a huge difference since all three of the colors are basically the same. So just playing around with the blending to change the intensity of that color. Now this looks pretty terrible right now, but we will be getting somewhere eventually, I promise you that, but we have to start from humble beginnings. The next step in this process inside of Camera Raw will be our color mixer, which is basically just HSL. So going into the color mixer panel, we can now go and change any of the existing hues from the original image that we wanna change the color of. So although we see a lot of blue in this photo right now, if I went to the blue slider and go and change this adjustment, nothing actually happens. And this is because you have to remember these adjustments are only looking at the colors from your original photo, not your edited photo. So if I look back at my original photo here, you can see that there's very little blue in the image at all. Therefore, it makes sense that this blues hue adjustment pretty much has no effect. So with our color mixer adjustment, we're only looking to change the colors that existed in the original photo that we can refine. So in this case, that's gonna be the leaves. So I'll go to the yellows here and I'll move this towards more orange. Same with the orange colors to make the leaves a bit more red and intense. And you can play around with the other options. I'll do the same thing with the greens and then move to the saturation and change up some of these as well. I wanna make those leaves really pop and be intense with that red color. So that looks cool to me here maybe decrease those reds. Since you're working on a different photo, I'll just skip over some of these specific adjustments since you can just play around with them for yourself. It's just the general process that you need to follow. With your saturations set, we can go to the luminance value if you would like to either lighten or darken certain colors within your photo. I'm gonna do that for a couple of them and then we will move on to the next step. With those adjustments complete, we're ready to bring our image into the main Photoshop workspace. I have open object down here, meaning that I'll be able to reaccess all of these camera raw adjustments later on if I would like. But if you don't see this setting, just hold shift and the open object button should appear. So just hold shift if you don't see that, but I'm gonna go ahead and click open object. But now this leads us into step number two after camera raw, which is our HSL adjustment. So although we kind of did that already inside of camera raw, we can now take this much further and edit the hues that are in our edited photo with this adjustment instead. So going to the adjustments panel, I'll click on hue saturation, and then we can work through the different colors one by one. But rather than guessing your way, you can also just click on the hand icon and click on a color that you want to sample, and it will automatically set your color to that channel. From here, we can go 
and refine the hue of that particular sampled color, the saturation, and the lightness as well. So take a moment to go through the different colors, and the goal here is to create two somewhat complementary colors within your photo. So since I'm going really blue for the overall image, I want these leaves to be more of like a rich orangey red color, because the opposite of blue is yellow, but as you start to skew towards the cyan color, the opposite becomes more of a red, so those are the colors that I will be favoring in this particular image. Now I've just skipped ahead and already gone through a few different color channels, just editing the hue, saturation, and lightness, and looking at the before and after from just this one adjustment, we've really taken our photo and balanced the colors a little bit more. So now we're ready for step number three. In this step, we're going to further refine and intensify our colors, but also have the ability to refine contrast with more precision. The adjustment that we'll be using is the selective color adjustment from the adjustments panel, or you can find it by clicking this icon down here. But before we do any changes to our settings, we want to apply the exposure values of our image onto this layer mask. So by clicking on this layer mask, we'll go up to image and down here to apply image. Make sure this is set to merged, RGB, and the blending mode to normal, and everything else is good to go. I'll click OK. Now this takes all of the exposure values of our image and applies it onto this layer mask so we can push the adjustments of our selective color a little bit further, and it won't look like we just slapped a filter on top of our photo. It just makes things blend in a little bit easier. If you wanna see a video covering this more in depth, I'll leave it in the description below for you to check out after this one. But what we're gonna do here is work through the blacks, neutrals, and whites, and add some color and contrast. So starting in the blacks, we can begin with the black slider and either lighten by adding white or darken by adding black to that exposure range. But more importantly, we can also change the color hue in that area by adding either yellow or the opposite of yellow, which is blue if we go in a negative direction. Depending on your photo, each exposure range will be more or less obvious in their changes, but I'm gonna work through the blacks, then the neutrals, and then the whites, just working through these sliders from the bottom to the top until I find something that I like. You go ahead and do the same with your images and I'll meet you when it is complete. With that adjustment complete, turning that on and off, we've just, again, further intensified and customized the colors, as well as adjusted some of the exposure. So now we're ready for step number four, which is going to be color balance using a similar set of steps. So once again, going to the adjustments panel, this time we'll go to the color balance adjustment, and we want to apply our image to the layer mask once again to make everything blend nicely. But to save ourselves some time, we can just hold Alt or Option and click on the apply apply image layer mask from before, and while holding alt or option, just click and drag it up to the layer mask you want to duplicate it to. So now we are good to go. Clicking on the adjustments icon here, we'll work through the shadows, highlights, and then the midtones to further add some extra color into this photo. So I'll start with the shadows and work through these sliders in order. With that adjustment complete, turning this on and off, it just adds a little bit more customization to that color once again. The point of all this is to just have more and more options to refine the color and hopefully land on something that you really like. If you're happy with your color adjustments after any one of these particular adjustments, you can just skip ahead to the last step in this lesson. But we're already there, so we're moving on to step number five, which is dodging and burning, because I'm happy with how the colors look, but now we can really tie everything together by adding some selective brightening and darkening adjustments. To dodge and burn our image non-destructively, we can create a 50% gray layer by pressing Command or Control, Shift, and N. And in the New Layer dialog box, I'll call this to DB for dodge and burn, set the mode down here to overlay, and then check the fill with overlay neutral 50% gray. Click OK. And with this layer selected, I'll begin by selecting my burn tool. For the range, I'll set this to the shadows, and I want a relatively high intensity, so the exposure will be at 20% in this case. Now when I go and paint over areas in the photo, it's going to more affect the darker tones within the image rather than anything else. That is because of our shadows range being selected. So if you paint over the same area multiple times, it's going to appear more and more dark, and the goal here is to darken the things on the outer edges of your photo and draw more attention to your subject. You can also go and darken along things that are already dark so that it just adds a little bit more life and richness to that contrast. So take a moment to just go and burn around the darker parts of your photo, anywhere that you want to appear more moody. 
and you can just scale your brush up and down really quickly by using the bracket keys while you work. Once you're happy with your burn adjustments, we can change over to the dodge tool and opposite to our last adjustment, we'll set our range to highlights and this time I'll just set the exposure to 10% so it's a little bit less intense. Now we'll do the same thing with the same idea, but we're gonna paint over the lighter areas this time and paint over anywhere that you want to have more attention to or stand out more against the dark contrast, such as the highlights in the pillars in this case and the opposite end of the bridge in this case. So I'll meet you again when all of my brightening adjustments are complete. Now with that adjustment complete, looking at the before and after, we've just added a lot more of a rich contrast with that dodging and burning and drawn a little bit more attention to the center of the image by heavily darkening those outer edges. Now you do this however you like, we all have different tastes and preferences, but I really like this high contrast look with these rich color edits. Looking at our before and after, we obviously have totally changed the colors in this photo and using a handful of relatively simple adjustments, we can do this to any image that we'd like. Now the colors and the intensity of them are totally up to you. You can just change the values of all of the different adjustments as you go until you find something that you think looks best. But ultimately, I think it's a great effect that you can try on some images and I think it works especially well in outdoor photos. Now, as I mentioned before, if you wanna learn more about apply image and how it works and compares against not using it at all, make sure to check out this video right here where I break down more specifically the power of apply image in your color grading adjustments. So make sure to check out that video next if you're interested and I hope to see you there.